We're talking about the second half now. The HBO TV series, The Last of Us, has captivated many of us for weeks on TV. The show is centered around main characters, Ellie and Joel, who are trying to survive after a fungus takes over the world, even controlling some humans who are a lot like zombies and killing other non-infected humans. It's a scenario some claim could happen if the global conditions were correct in this world. Right now, people in Tennessee are dealing with a disturbing fungus problem. It's not taking over humans, but one couple says it's out of control, turning their entire community black, from cars to houses to, to street signs, even on dead carcasses like cows. They say it's caused by the vapors coming from the Jack Daniels Barrel Storage Warehouses in Lincoln County, Tennessee. In a lawsuit against the county where the warehouses are located, the couple is demanding accountability. So, Christy and Patrick, when did you guys realize you had a serious problem in your community with fungus? Well, I would say uh, um, right after we moved in, we started to realize that the fungus was um, it, it was uh, ever present. And it's not like something that you just clean off and it's gone kind of a thing. Right. Uh, we noticed that it just continued to get worse and worse, right? And um, I think what really set off the alarm bells, though, and was the fact that unbeknownst to anyone in the county they had plans to build 20 barrel houses that's 18 more than were there when we moved in and mm -hmm. that pure magnitude of large ethanol and fungus we knew was just going to overwhelm the county and that's really what we're fighting with with jason right now is just to try to limit that somehow via filtration and also unbeknownst to us we didn't realize how big these barrel houses were these are bigger than they have in Lynchburg. These are 86,000 square feet with 66,000 gallons of, of whiskey. Barrels. Of, of barrels. And so it's just like, that's that's enormous. So it makes the bacteria or makes the fungus uh, on steroids. And Christy and Patrick, you know, what's surprising is no one came forward and made the noise like you guys have. I guess everyone just <laughs> sat back and took it, which is strange. Yeah. It is. Um, and so here's what I would say. So Christy is originally from the area, born and raised. Uh, she's been gone for 20 years or so now since we've been, we've come back. But I really just think that it's a lot of, Jack Daniels has a lot of influence. There are a lot of people in Moore County who work there. The majority of the, com of the, the, the county probably is affiliated with Jack Daniels in some way, generationally. We really, our jobs are not in Fayetteville. We both work remote for large corporations outside these this area. Um, we Our business isn't really focused on serving that area either. Most of our customers for our venue come from outside the area. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of insulated. What we hear a lot is people say they're scared to say anything because they're afraid they'll get in trouble. And so we've just kind of got shoved out in front of everybody because everybody's like, well, y'all aren't going to be hurt financially necessarily as bad as maybe they would be. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of how it's just sort of taken a life of its own. And here we are by ourselves. And Jason, I want to get you involved in here. Yes. Exactly what kind of fungus is this? And is this typical of the distilling process or the storage process when it comes to liquor around this country? Well, the actual name of the fungus is named after uh, a French distiller, the Strand, uh, and it's because it was first observed you know, over a century ago in areas around distilleries. And if you speak to people in Scotland and the Caribbean with rum or in Kentucky and Tennessee with bourbon and Tennessee whiskey, uh, this fungus grows near facilities in all these areas. Um, but the issue that we have is that, as Christy mentioned, the concentration of these facilities and the expansion of these facilities, uh, with that comes a significant concentration and expansion of this fungal growth. So I think that's why you're seeing uh, the longs come forward now is that the level of impact is becoming much more significant uh, than it would be historically.
And Patrick and Christy, I looked at some of your photos and it's just mind blowing how this fungus just grows on everything. And yeah, it's yeah. it's dark. And then I think someone said it would be level on top of level, yes. on yes. top of level, making it so thick, it's hard to remove. Agreed. And, you know, it, the uh, there is a, a doctor up in um, Canada, Dr. Scott, works, goes to the University of Toronto, has done a lot of research. He's actually the one who is sort of credited for having the most scientific studies starting back in 2007. And what he says is it most definitely destroys vegetation. It most definitely will destroy your property. It strips the paint off of cars and that it's just by grace that it to date, we don't know if it actually affects humans or not. Um, those are the reasons why, to Jason's point, that if we if we don't take a stand now, it's going to be very hard to go back five years from now when 20 of these things are standing here mm -hmm. and try to say, well, you know, now that we know really how bad it is, Jack Daniels would probably just say, well, but you let us do it. And we're, that's really what we're trying to avoid is just to say there is a known technology called RTO that will use the ethanol that you are creating to burn itself and will eliminate all fungus, period, and will eliminate any health hazards that are potentially um, could cause damage to people in the surrounding areas. And for whatever reason, Jack Daniels and most distillers choose not to spend the $300,000 or so on these systems per barrel house to do that. And that's the mind boggling thing for us. You see what you just talked about. You see the trees. We just had two tree or a tree fall, half of, half of a tree fall yesterday for this exact reason, coated in fungus from a storm. And you just go, why in the world will they not just put the filtration on? And all this stops and they can, they can become a culture or an environmental warrior to the public if they would do that. Real life horror scenario is playing out for some people in Tennessee. A couple says they're shelling out $10,000 a year on their home to clean a black fungus caused by a nearby Jack Daniels warehouse. Now, it's one of many warehouses in the area. It's not just their homes. They say it's also over buildings, street signs, trees, buildings, and even animal remains. Patrick and Christy Long's attorney about what can be done. What kind of remedy are you looking for? So at this point, we've taken action against the county government because the county government has its own obligation to properly review new construction and inspect buildings as they are constructed during the building process. Um, that did not occur here. Of the seven barrel houses, only two obtained site plan approval, which is when the planning commission reviews your site, reviews your facilities, and only one obtained a building permit. And interestingly, the one that obtained a building permit didn't obtain site plan approval. So the two elements that all, all new construction has to have in Lincoln County, none of these facilities have all of those approvals and reviews and certainly the fungus is an issue but we also have a concern with the sheer scope of these buildings about life safety um, whether or not you deem ethyl alcohol to be a hazardous substance or not it is certainly a flammable substance yeah. and so we want to be sure in addition to the fungus issue that these buildings are built safely and so what I filed was a petition for mandamus in our chancery court, and the court has answered that and filed an order and ordered the, the halting of the construction of the barrel house that's currently under construction. So we have already received that immediate remedy, um, but obviously we're looking to expand that to be sure the ones that were already constructed were done so properly and to ask for the filtration that Christy and Patrick have raised. Uh, and then going forward to be sure that any new construction is properly supervised. So, so we're gonna continue in those efforts and potentially look at some damage claims directly against Jack Daniels because of the, the impact the Longs and others in the area have suffered. Uh, but you have not as of yet filed anything against uh, Jack Daniels is specifically the county. Yes. Specifically at this point, the county, we believe that was the most direct path to get action. And I think that's proven to be true because we've obtained an order that required the issuance of a stop work against Jack Daniels. And the county has now 
acted upon the court's order and issued that stop work. So uh, we were able to do that in less than 30 days. Um, and I think that was probably much more efficient than a lawsuit directly against Jack Daniels. And that does not foreclose our right to go forward against Jack Daniels if, if these issues aren't properly addressed. We want to thank you all for joining us, and we wish you the best of luck. At some point, I would assume a logical person would realize you're standing up for the entire community, but we shall see. Thank you both. Mr. Holloman, thank you as well. Also, what we heard from the couple there is that how they were being attacked by many people in their own community saying that they're trying to end their jobs with Jack Daniels. They say they're being attacked on social media. And of course, we may have more on that later uh, as we continue to follow this story down the road. A spokesperson for Jack Daniels issued a lengthy statement to the media saying during the siting and building process, we work closely with Lincoln County and provide all information asked of us by local officials as well as adhere to regulatory requirements, strict industry guidelines, and rigorous internal standards that we follow in building warehouses. Anyone who has visited the Jack Daniels Distillery or any other distillery with maturing spirits has likely noticed the presence of micro microflora. Microflora grows on trees, buildings, and other structures around distilleries and warehouses. And of course, we'll be right back.